On the 26th day of October, Halloween gave to me 26 hot dog ghosts, 25 grateful hitchhikers, 24 soggy corpses, 23 shadows creepy, 22 Egyptian eyeballs, 21 acid raves, 20 creepy stalkers, 19 Kiernan's time traveling, 18 zombie swatting, 17 Kekner screeching, 16 flying engines, 15 workplace accidents, 14 logs a bouncing, 13 planes exploding, 12 zombie soldiers, 11 angels wrestling, 10 ghostly hitchhikers, 9 basement clowns, 8 vampire cruises, 7 silent heroes, 6 prequel bloodstones, 5 diabolical fledglings, 4 vampire pianists, 3 dead professors, 2 Michelle actresses, and a radu drooling something bloody. Hey everyone, welcome to the 26th day of the 31 days of Halloween. Oh boy, we're really closing in on it now. Uh, and we have a, a real crowd pleaser for you today, folks. Uh, we're rounding out our look at the Creepshow trilogy uh, as it stands right now. Uh, we talked about Creepshow and what an amazing movie that is. And then Creepshow 2 uh, being uh, a real also ran compared to the original Creepshow. But we're finally uh, landing on a high note in the series where we talk about Creepshow 3, uh, truly one of the greatest horror anthologies ever made. Uh, hey, that can't be true, you say. And I say, you're right. I'm just giving you a little trick with the tricking and the treating. Uh, Creepshow 3 is a real piece of shit. <laughs> it's terrible. But why is it terrible? That's It's easy to say a movie sucks, right? Why does it suck? And, uh, and it's easy to say everything, <laughs> but, and it's mostly true when you talk about, uh, uh, Creep Show 3, but let's talk about specifically, what about this movie is so bad? What does it get wrong? And let's begin with the fact that this was a movie that, uh, clearly, you know, has nothing to do with Stephen King or George Romero, uh, who, you know, sadly Papa Bear has passed away and it's... It is a movie that uh, is, is made because some, you know, company, some production company, some low rent fly by night company bought the film rights to Creep Show from someone. And uh, as such, uh, the, you know, the, they were able to make in 2006 this Creep Show 3 movie, which I, again, had never seen prior to this. Uh, I'd always heard it was terrible. I will add my voice to that chorus of people saying, hey, if you've never seen Creepshow 3, please don't bother. It, it's really bad. Uh, it is directed by Anna Clavell and James Glenn Doodleson, who uh, have done uh, not a lot. Uh, a movie, they started in 96 with something called Compromising uh, Situations. Uh, the big claim to fame for both this company and the co-director James Glenn Doodleson is that they did day of the dead Two contagion, which is, uh, also a rotten movie. And I should have known better. Like I, I didn't do that investigation prior to, I should have damn well known better. Uh, and I didn't. And then there's uh, Scott Friz Frizzell, whose only writing credits are creep show three and something called house of bad which I don't believe I've seen. Based on the blurb, it sounds unfamiliar to me, even though it, it you know, it's a generic sort of summary about like, hey, a bunch of girls steal some heroin and they go back to this house that they lived in when they were kids and uh, it's haunted. So, you know, weird shit happens, one presumes. Anyway, doesn't have a great rating and based on this, uh, I can kind of see why. So uh, let's look at the stories individually. There is a wraparound story of sorts about a hot dog. And much like the marble ashtray of Creepshow, uh, they, they're, this hot dog van and hot dogs in general kind of weirdly feature uh, in every story. Uh, but we'll get to that. It's, uh, right, so let's start with uh, story number one, Alice, which is... A girl going home, uh, like seems to be high school age, and she's just kind of bitchy. And she goes home, and a professor in the neighborhood has given her father a remote control, 
and every time uh, the guy, the father, tries to change the channel, what happens is uh, they turn into a different family. Like, originally they're black, and then they're Hispanic. And every time that reality sort of changes on our main character, Alice, she gets a little more gross. Like, her skin starts to bubble up, and... Uh, you know, there's a lot of wandering around she does to try to figure out what's going on. Not that any of this matters. The punchline to the whole thing is that apparently the professor planned this all along and he uses the, his own remote control or something. And then she becomes a rabbit and uh, we see her a couple of times. Uh, uh, worth saying, this movie's trying to do a little bit of trick or treat, a little bit of Pulp Fiction where all these characters from all the stories sort of, uh, you know, appear in the other stories there. Uh, the chronology is slightly out. Like the, there's some stuff that happens in Alice that you see, uh, later on in another story. And Alice herself as the rabbit appears at the end, uh, in another story as the, the movie's kind of wrapping up and, you know, characters, from one story show up in another story or you see uh, a glimpse of their story happening kind of alongside the, the these other ones which all makes it sound way better than it is it it's real like kind of who cares because the stories themselves are so garbage why on earth would you care to look so closely to to uh, uh, identify other things happening like when you're watching trick or treat like trick or treat's already a good movie and and the seasoning is that sort of, oh, like, oh, there's the character from that story. And, oh, the kids who go down the elevator into the, the creepy area with all the pumpkins. They're walking by one character on their way to their business, but we're following another story. That kind of thing. And this just, you know, kind of plays on that same thing. But again, you just don't care. Like, none of these characters are really likable or interesting. And, you know, the... That sort of stuff in Trick or Treat is a nice, uh, like I said, it's kind of a nice little season. It's like a little bit of uh, cinematic paprika to to give the, the taste of the film uh, a, a little bit of a kick. But like Trick or Treat, if it had none of that stuff, would still be a great horror movie anthology. One of the best, if not the best. This is awful. And all right, so that's Alice. Alice it turns into a rabbit and we're done with her. Then there's one called The Radio, which is about a guy that buys a radio from a homeless dude. I think he's homeless anyway. And A.J. Bowen uh, plays the the guy who swipes the radio. So that's something. Like, that's a, a, at least a real actor. Uh, you know, he's been in, in decent stuff before. Uh, you know, uh, House of the Devil and You're Next and... The Sacrament, was a big Ty West kind of guy, was also in The Signal. Like, been in good stuff. Uh, here, he is uh, definitely just punching a clock and getting paid, one hopes. But yeah, he plays a real shit heel uh, who buys this radio and then a voice uh, comes over the radio and starts telling him how to live his life and how he needs to invest in stuff and diversify and oh by the way you should steal the local drug dealers money and uh you know for what it's worth the twist of this is that uh he tries to run away with a local prostitute who seems to like him and the radio is like hey you you need to kill her because she's gonna crawdad you and sure enough she crawdads him and uh he gets killed and then the local uh, pimp uh, slash drug dealer shows up and kills the prostitute. Uh, and the radio is like, hey, uh, I told you that if you just waited long enough, you would catch them up to no good. And here's some money. So, uh, you know, uh, we're off on another adventure with this radio voice. And that's it. Although I that takes forever to get to that place. Then there's Call Girl which is about a serial killing prostitute who ends up going to a John's house, trying to kill him and then discovering that he is in fact a vampire and he kills her. And, and the implication is that she is going to become a vampire with them and they're going to be, you know, a cool vampire couple or something. Uh, and then that's that again, I am giving you the 
you know, uh, synopsis in a way that makes it sound more interesting than it really is. Because imagine if all the stuff I'm describing to you is done super cheap and it looks bad and uh, it's all done on digital and everything looks like crap and uh, the stories are too long. So, you know, keep that in the back of your head as I'm describing this. Then there's the professor's wife, really the nadir, I think, of this particular film which is all about this crazy professor, by the way, the same one who invented the uh, the remote control early on in the movie uh, with that story, Alice. So he's gonna have uh, a, a marriage. Uh, he's gonna get married. A couple of his former students come over and are like, hey, this uh, lady that uh, he's marrying, she sure is pretty and younger than him. And also, she doesn't seem to remember her life before they were going to get married. And she doesn't eat or drink anything. And you know what? I bet this uh, professor, who was always into robotics, he sure enough uh, made a robot. And so they tackled this poor woman in a kitchen and hack her up uh, to, to see how she works. And sure enough, uh, as you might imagine, not a robot. Not a robot at all. Turns out she's just a mail order bride and has some weird memory issues. So she doesn't remember stuff so good. And so the guys end up uh, shoving all of her into the refrigerator. And when the professor comes home, he opens the refrigerator door and is like, whoa, -oh, hey, that's my wife, you dicks. And that's kind of the end of that story. So, and again, goes on way too long. If it had been six to seven minutes of that great as it happens uh this thing goes along for about an hour 45 for all of these stories which uh is way longer than it, it felt it felt like it was going on for fucking ever and then the last thing is a story called haunted dog and haunted dog is about uh this asshole doctor who has no specialty by the way he's seeing everything from stomach aches to you know, uh, people with weird toes and all kinds of stuff. Doesn't matter. He's seeing it all. Uh, general practitioner, one presumes. Anyway, this uh, terrible doctor is uh, getting a hot dog one day. And uh, it falls on the ground. And he doesn't want it anymore. So he gives it to a homeless guy. And the homeless guy eats it and chokes on it and dies. And... Uh, much like the hitchhiker from Creepshow 2, now everywhere that this doctor goes, this ghost shows up uh, vomiting up a hot dog and thanking him for the hot dog. Um, and it happens all over the place. This story goes on for fucking ever. You follow him to parties. Oh, he goes to a party that the vampire's holding and he leaves just in time to avoid a massacre. Um, it's you know, that's a little bit of a, a crossover there with some of the other stories that you don't care about. And, uh, yeah. So at the end of it, he just gets so scared by the hot dog guy that he dies. And then at the very end of the movie, uh, some paramedics show up to take the body of this guy away. Uh, who is uh, again, a reprehensible person. The fact that he dies is a good thing. Like one of the women in his uh, uh, it, th that he's seeing in his practice, uh, it has like some weird allergy on her wrist, and he's like, "I'm gonna need you to take all of your clothes and turn around and bend over," uh, and that's just you know how I do it as a doctor. It's terrible. He is a terrible person, and he deserves what he gets. Only nothing that happens in the story is uh, is interesting. Like, you know what's going to happen. You know that this hot dog ghost, one way or to other, is going to kill him. And he dies in the least interesting way possible, which seems to be a heart attack. He just dies on the street. And, yeah, so then an uh, ambulance shows up to take him away. And then we see the hot dog guy who's been handing out hot dogs all through this movie. And he turns around and he looks vaguely like the creep from Creep Show 2. And, oh yeah, there's also some shitty animation along the way. And when I say shitty animation, I mean, it looks like your nephew did it in one of his computer classes and got a C. 
You know, like a, a middle school computer class, C-level work. It's just awful. Everything about this is just rotten. The acting is bad, uh, with the exception of A.J. Bowen. I think he does a, a reasonable job in this. And, and like, the guy who plays the doctor it at least has the tone right of being smarmy, but he's not really a good actor, per se. Everyone else is kind of terrible, but I also don't know... <sighs> Like, I, I don't know what the direction was like. I don't know how any of this was ever going to be good. I'm not putting this on the shoulders of the actors. Who, who knows if it could have been good. Oh, also at the end, I forgot to say, uh, it wraps up with the wedding of the professor who has somehow used, like, this voodoo doll to get his mail-order bride back walking around again. Uh, and when she throws the bouquet, her hand goes with it, which is kind of something. But... Uh, you know, if the whole movie were that kind of shenanigans, maybe I'd be on board. But um, yeah, it's it, it's just bad. It's it's poorly written. It's it's generally acted poorly. But again, I'm not going to pin that on the actors necessarily. Uh, a lot of times, I'm j I'm just going to go back to the writing and the direction, which is all rotten. The direction's real flat. There's no style to it. Uh, the stories are ham fisted at best, and mostly just overly long. It's terrible. Creepshow 3 is awful. I, I'm so glad that the remainder of, you know, this Halloween season, I've got stuff that I'm really excited to talk about that I've either seen before or have heard great things about and expect that it will be at least decent. This is a travesty of movie making. If you've never seen Creepshow 3, let me reiterate, do not see Creepshow 3. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your life like I did. I had to watch it on one of them Tubi services uh, because that was the only place to get it without, you know, giving these people money. And as a result, there were commercials mixed in. And as a result of that, this movie was almost two fucking hours long. And I could not be angry. I'm so mad that I watched this movie. I should never have done this. I thought it would be kind of funny to slip in a little bit of a stinker, but I had no appreciation for how stinky this stinker was going to be uh so yeah it was it was real rough going anyway enough complaining it's not what i really enjoy uh i like talking about good movies this was not one of them but every now and again you know you roll the dice so you come up snake eyes here on the 31 days of halloween but no more no moss there there shan't be another bad movie in our run from here to halloween uh so please come back tomorrow we've got just one offs from here to the end of uh, the Halloween season. Uh, like I said, they're either movies that I really adore or they are movies that I've heard good things about. In some cases, both. And we'll talk about all of those starting tomorrow on the 31 Days of Halloween. See you then.